Right then, after uh, the last 48 hours or so and everything that's gone on and everybody's outreach and support, first of all, I thought I'd say thank you. Um, secondly, I thought I'd try and give you a bit of an explanation as to what went on last night with the last carving of this young lady here, wherever she is. There you go. Here's Purdy. Um, what I'm going to do is put a little video clip in and show you what I call the pressure dance. So when you've got the machine on and you load the animal up with the tension of the traction of the machine against the calf, you see this weight shift in your animal, which suggests that you're on the borderline of causing trouble or that you should be calling for a section. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was bollocksed. I've had about four and a half, five hours sleep a night for the last four or five days with all the carvings and everything else going on. Um, bird is here again. Uh, so, in reviewing the footage, I would suggest that I was probably fixated on getting the calf out and not thinking to the full extent of my ability. But you don't always call it right all the time. Um, so I'll put the clip on now. Watch it, watch it a few times, take it in, and then I'll discuss it with you. Right. From that, you should see that I've put not quite full tension on the machine, but the bar of the machine has lifted from the horizontal, so there's pressure against the cow's hip and exerted on the calf. When you apply any more pressure, you see the cow starting to shift weight from leg to leg. You're getting just full plenty of pressure through the pelvis. The reason I carried on or in my mind the reason I carried on was I'd already had my hand in I'd felt that I could get more than the width of my fingers between that calf's shoulders and her pelvis so I didn't think it was going to get stuck the other telltale when you're putting the bands on is if the calf's legs are crossed over if they cross like that in the first instance there's pressure on the shoulders forcing the legs together. So they're tight in the pelvis. This calf was like this. It wasn't tight. Um, but I'm half inclined to say it was dead before I started because when I first looked at her and cut the bag to access the feet, there was a little bit of the uh, point where the placenta anchors to the cotyledon showing at the edge of the bag. So I don't know if the placenta was starting to come away and that's why she's lost the calf. She was at 275 days, so it could have been early. She could have had a knock. I'd got a cow in that pen bully and a few of the others. Um, so we could have just been unlucky. Um, I'm going to take bloods and find out whether we have got any mineral deficiencies that are causing this as well. In the interim, we're tipping a bit of iodine down the backs for the next batch of cows that are due, just to see if it does cover any issues. Um, but yeah, back to carving. <clears throat> Unknown bull should have been capable of carving by virtue of his back breeding, but I've got a fact of the back breeding into Purdy as well. Could have just had a bad combination of genetics. It was a heifer calf, so front end bone structure wasn't particularly heavy. There was a reasonable amount of depth in the chest, which probably put the brakes on behind the shoulders. Um, but once you've got the front end out, you're getting beyond the point of no return. So I committed to it, but that point I'd made my choice, um, continued and got the calf out. 
it did get stuck at the hips. Um, removed all pressure, rotated the calf as best I could, applied lube, reset with the jack, put the ropes above the knees, put sustained pressure on, but not excessive, still wouldn't budge. Let it off again, let her readjust, still wouldn't budge. Um, third attempt, she'd shifted herself completely and I think that just broke the seal, so the calf came, but obviously it was long gone by that point. There was no pupil response when I first got his head out, so I knew I was on hiding to nowhere at that point. Could I have had a live calf with a section, potentially? Would I have had a heifer in a lot better fettle today? More than likely. Um, and for anybody making these sorts of calls, whether you've done a lot of calving or not a lot of calving, you need to evaluate whether you think the calf is going to come out. And at the worst case, get your vet to come and stand on your shoulder. Um, doesn't always hurt to have another head there giving you opinion. And if your vet's there, you've then got the option of putting a side door in straight away. Um, I'm always conscious of time when I've gotten to this point, but I'm normally happy to stand and wait and keep the cow comfortable and calm. As it is now, I've nipped the nerve in Purdy. She will stand, but she's gonna want a few days to recover. And I've got to manage her during the process of that versus looking after a Caesar wound. So where I've not got the risk of adhesions, I have caused trauma. And you've got to balance these options up and think pragmatically when you're in the process of assisting a carving. I've said it before, don't pull hard, have a side door. Um, it is a balancing act of the sections I had last year. We only had 45% get back in calf. So you're conscious of all these factors when you're making a call, but it never hurts to step back and have a breather and have a think about it. Um, yeah, I hope this gives people a bit of perspective. Thank you all for following. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for getting in touch. It does look a bit of a shitstorm at the minute, but it will turn a corner. It always does. The carving percentages are normally pretty good. Um, it's just unfortunate with the twins more than anything because you've, you've lost your get out of jail free card on a few. Um, there's a serious bag of milk there that's going to waste now. And it's a bloody shame. But uh, this is livestock. This is the realities of it. And we've got a cow carving now, so I'll catch you in a bit. Thank you, folks.